Net worth $11.5 billion. Born on 11th October in 1967, Peter Thiel has come a long way from a nerdy childhood to taking over the control of the world. So, how has he done it? Well, let's get to it. Thiel has successfully used this insane secret to make billions of dollars because he and his one of the companies have been able to start and fund the hidden gems like PayPal, Facebook, Palantir, SpaceX, OpenAI, Stripe, Airbnb, Neuralink, Spotify, Lyft, The Boring Company, and Dural. And there are many more on the list. He has also invested in the concept of permanent floating communities who could live in international water without restrictions. What? Wow. His immense wealth has given him freedom to knowing many secret societies, CIA, and politicians across the globe. It's like going to be a razor-thin close election. Then, um, then I'm pretty sure Kamala will win because, um, because they will cheat, they will fortify it, they will steal the ballots. And so, so, uh, so you know, if, if, we, if, 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 if we can, if we can, if we can, if we can. Has he left anything? I don't think so. He has also been investing millions in Bitcoins for more than a decade. He and his one of the companies, Founders Fund, they keep finding the interesting concepts. Although I don't know how, but yeah, I know how. And that's coming. Like reverse aging, space exploration, floating water cities, AI, blockchain technology, ETC, ETC. And all this is because of one mental model, the hidden force. Peter has been using this one secret to amass a fortune. It's the hidden force that shapes your desires, your dreams, your entire reality. And once you see it, oh, you cannot unsee it. Now let me ask you this. Do you really think you have a free will? Are you really in control? What if you're wrong? Ninety percent of your thoughts are not even your own. The average person spends three hours a day on social media absorbing the desires of others. You think you're making your own choices, but what if you're just a puppet on a string, dancing to your tune, and you cannot even hear? This one desire drives stock market bubbles, fashion trends, and even political movements. <laughs> And Thiel, he didn't just stumble upon this force, he mastered it. He built an empire around it by understanding how to control it. While others were blindly following the crowd, Thiel was playing a different game entirely, like a chess player strategically moving pieces on a board representing the market. I'm talking about the mimetic desire. Peter Thiel's greatest arsenal. It's a contagion of desire. We crave what others crave, believe what others believe. It's how trends go viral. Markets crash, war erupts. There's this philosopher, Rene Girard. He has this thing called mimetic desire. It's the idea that like you don't know what you want, so you want what other people want. I found that a good chunk of my 20s was sort of being drawn towards things, not because like I was interested in them, but because people were interested yep. in them. A lot of the things I ended up doing, I didn't even know existed. In other words, we want and do something because we see someone else doing it. Ever notice how quickly a particular style of clothing or accessory can become massively popular? It's not always because it's the most practical or comfortable, but often because we see celebs, influencers, or even our peers sporting it, making us want it too. Remember those must-have sneakers everyone was lining up for? Those toilet papers? <laughs> The end of the line for the toilet. Mummeric desire in action. And these advertising and marketing companies, they play on mummeric desire. They create a sense of urgency for the products that we may not even need. The latest car gadget, the newest car model, the bag of the season. We might not even need them, but we want to buy because others are buying. We simply want to do what others do. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, monkey do. Now, Peter Thiel is a smart chap. He knows that we humans are imitating machines and he simply does the opposite. He looks for the companies solving problems others don't even see yet. He looks for the companies that are not the part of the herd. Remember Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> herd, mob, they have just got heads but no brains. Peter looks for the unloved ideas, the ones everyone else ignoring. He looks for the entrepreneurs who dare to challenge the status quo. His approach is simple. Look for the companies that are different, that are solving the problems others don't even see yet. They don't even recognize yet. Like SpaceX defying conventional wisdom about space exploration and Dural Industries tackling defense technology in a new way. It's simple. Do what others are not doing. I sort of think about my colleague Elon Musk from PayPal's success with Tesla and SpaceX. Uh, I think the key to these companies was the complex vertically integrated monopoly structure they had.
Peter doesn't just want companies to compete, he wants them to dominate. Monopolies are good because they escape the destructive cycle of imitation. Yes sir, competition is for losers, you gotta dominate. How Peter defines a monopoly, not just by market share, but proprietary technology, network effects and branding. He emphasizes on the importance of building a moat around your business to protect it from imitators. Like Google's search dominance, Facebook's social network monopoly. Let me say this once again. If you're going to start a business, think of dominating a small market, as Thiel would say, because competition is for losers. Uh, I, I sort of have a, I have a single idée fixe that I'm completely obsessed with in, um, on, on the business side, which is that uh, if you're starting a company, if you're the founder, entrepreneur starting a company, you always want to aim for monopoly. And, um, and that, uh, and you want to always avoid competition. And so, uh, hence, uh, competition is for losers, uh, something we'll be talking about today. Thiel knows that mummesis can destroy a company from within. He fosters cultures of independent thinking and shared purpose. As he rightly said, a startup messed up at its foundation cannot be fixed. So he hires missionaries over mercenaries, people who are passionate about the company's vision, not just the paycheck. He also emphasizes on the importance of creating a culture that values originality, debate, and long-term thinking. Zero to one thinking, encouraging employees to create new things, not just creating what already exists, it's just copy-paste, copy-paste, monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> By the way, do you still remember PayPal's Mafia? A tight-knit group of early employees who went on to found other successful companies because they were original thinkers. In fact, Palantir is also focusing on attracting top talent and fostering a culture of intellectual rigor. For those who doesn't know Palantir, well, Palantir helped CIA track Osama bin Laden. CIA? Hmm, fishy. Now you know Thiel's greatest weapon, the anti-mummeric desire. Don't go where everyone is going, else you're doomed to fail. That's why Peter invested in companies like Airbnb and many more. By the way, Airbnb disrupted the hotel industry by tapping into an unmet need. But Thiel doesn't use these strategies just for his own investments. He's looking for entrepreneurs who understand mummises and are actively fighting against it. For generations, we have been told to follow that success means following the well-trodden path. Go to college, get a degree, climb up the corporate ladder. The mummeric cycle. Do what others are doing. It's like some father who's suffering from mummeric virus. <laughs> My son, I have been working in this factory for two centuries. You ought to do the same in the future. Your unfortunate kids, they ought to do the same. Do what others are doing. And Thiel sees this trap. He realizes that the true innovation doesn't come from following the crowd. It comes from breaking free from the mummeric matrix. I think VCs and entrepreneurs can use Thiel's framework to identify promising companies, look for contrarian ideas, monopoly potential, and strong internal cultures. Ask, is this company creating something truly new or just copying what's already out there? And this is not just for VCs or billionaires. You can use this to your advantage in your life and career. Question everything, find your own desires, build a tribe of misfits, become the trend setter, not the trend follower. In your career, seek out unique opportunities, don't just follow the crowd. In your relationships, cultivate authentic connections, not just superficial ones. In your personal growth, define your own values, don't just keep imitating others. The mummetic matrix is powerful, but it's not invincible. If somehow you can break free, you can find your way to the power. Peter Thiel has shown us the way. Now it's your time to build the future that is truly yours. So that's it. That's a wrap. I hope you have liked the video. If you have, don't forget to share and subscribe our channel.